All right, physics students, um, welcome to this video lecture that's going to introduce us to projectile motion. We started this unit out by doing a FET lab um, where we were kind of seeing projectile motion in action. So you were taking a look at horizontally launched projectiles and you were taking a look at angle launch projectiles. So the purpose of this video lecture is to just kind of debrief some concepts that we should have seen within that video or within that uh, that online simulation and then the next video lecture is going to go through kind of the problem solving process that we take uh, with horizontally launched projectiles okay so to start out uh, within that video lecture um, you started out by uh, you started out by utilizing this idea of horizontally launched projectiles and while you were working you were seeing these projectiles make a nice parabolic shape Okay, now why does that parabolic shape actually occur? Well, the big key reason is that within 2D motion, within projectile motion, our horizontal uh, motion and the vertical motion of that particular object are split into two parts. So this first part, I, let's just imagine that I'm able to turn gravity off. And what's going to happen is this cannon's just going to shoot out this, this cannonball horizontally. And in, in the absence of air resistance, well, what is that, what is that motion going to look like? Well, if I were to draw a ticker tape diagram here, that motion is going to look something like this. Okay, where we're seeing the same amount of distance covered per time interval. This is showing me that I'm moving at a constant velocity. There's nothing affecting the motion of this thing in the horizontal direction. But now if I turn gravity back on and now I'm going to look at the, the vertical motion of this object, well what is that going to look like? Well if we just drop the cannonball here, just drop the cannonball from the edge of this cliff, it's going to be an object in free fall. Okay, so the motion of that object is going to look something like this. where we're seeing this accelerating motion. We're seeing the distance that's covered per time interval is going to be increasing. So if I were to just match these points up now, okay, I'm just going to match these points up. Very roughly, I'm seeing this parabolic shape again. Okay, I was trying to get it exactly on that blue line. I got pretty close. But because our motion uh, is, is separated between the X and the Y direction, and because those two types of motion are different, we're able to accomplish this parabolic shape. And that's a really important concept for us to understand uh, in terms of projectile motion. All right, so the last slide showed the motion that we have when we launch projectile horizontally. Um, this one's briefly going to go through um, what that motion looks like with an angle launch projectile. So with an angle launch projectile, you should have seen in that FET simulation that we, that we finally see a full parabolic shape. Okay, with horizontally launched projectiles, we're only seeing half of that parabolic shape. Okay, we're only seeing the, 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 the later half of the, of the parabola. So again, let's just analyze this motion using those ticker tape diagrams like we did uh, on the previous slide. So if I were to shoot this cannonball horizontally in the absence of air resistance, there's nothing that's affecting the motion of that cannonball horizontally. So the ticker tape diagram is going to be looking something like this again. Okay, where we're seeing constant velocity, we're seeing the same amount of distance covered per time interval. All right, now, if I were to shoot this, okay, again, if I were to shoot this cannonball straight up now, well, again, it becomes an object in free fall. So it's going to have some huge amount of initial velocity, but as it moves up, it's going to be slowing down. So what that means is that it's going to be covering less distance per time interval. So it's going to look something like this, okay, where we have a huge amount of distance covered initially, but then that amount per time is going to decrease, okay, as we rise to our peak. 
So if I match up these points then, we're again going to see that this is going to create a nice parabolic shape for us. Okay, again, they're not matching up completely because I am an imperfect human. Um, but we are seeing roughly, again, a nice parabolic shape if we match up those ticker tape diagrams. And why? Again, why are we getting that parabolic shape? We're getting that parabolic shape because we can keep these two directions, X and Y, we can keep their motion separate when we look and analyze uh, projectile motion. We do not have to mash these directions together. And that's a huge advantage for us when we finally start solving problems. We can keep our X and our Y directions separate. We can basically solve those two sides um, independently from one another. So to wrap up this first video lecture on projectile, on projectile motion, motion, I want to summarize this information with uh, a table of sorts. So... What I want to take a look at is I want to take a look at horizontal motion of projectiles and I want to take a look at the vertical motion because remember in 2D kinematics we can split things up into its components and in projectile motion we have horizontal motion and we have vertical motion so we're going to split these up. Now in horizontal motion first thing I want to think about are there any forces acting on the object in the horizontal direction? Our answer there is no. There are no forces acting on the object in the horizontal direction because we're assuming that there is no air resistance. However, in the vertical direction, are there forces acting on that object? And our answer here is yes. It is the force of gravity, and it's acting in the downward direction at all times. Now, next thing I want to think about is acceleration. In our horizontal motion, think back to the horizontally launched projectile slide, the angle launched projectile slide. Did our velocity change? No, it did not. We had a constant velocity in both of those projectile motions at all times. Now, in our vertical direction, we did have acceleration. Because we know if the only thing acting on that object is the force of gravity, we know that we have acceleration in the vertical direction. And that acceleration is 9.8 meters per second squared. The last thing here, and this kind of goes along with acceleration, is our velocity. Well, we said in the horizontal motion that we have no acceleration, so therefore our velocity is constant. However, in the vertical motion, we said that we had acceleration. So obviously, um, our velocity in the vertical motion is changing. And how much is it changing by? Well, it's changing by 9.8 meters per second each second. Okay, so Really, this um, video lecture, I wanted you to be able to visualize um, the two types of projectile motion, understanding what's going on in terms of the velocity, what's going on in terms of the acceleration, and how that affects the path um, of a horizontally or angle launch projectile. So next week, we're going to be delving in deeper into projectile motion, first beginning with horizontally launched projectiles, and then moving on to get a little more advanced with angle launch projectiles. Have a great weekend, AP Physics students. Take care.